Hi, thanks for coming back to the channel. I'm Jason, you're watching Screen Photographic here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Now today I'm going to talk to you about something which, as a photographer, you're definitely going to need at some point, probably at every point, and that's light. Um, now you'll see that I'm using a lighting source here on my um, left hand side as you look at the image to light myself up and this is a continuous light now I've only got one coming in from one side so the other side of my face my right hand side of my face my left as you look uh, is in shadow um, and continuous lighting is one form of light you could run in a home studio in a professional studio um, anywhere indoors which offers you some kind of power supply um, now they do run very hot so if you are running a session perhaps with a model um, perhaps shooting family um, or you've got one set up perhaps for some um, product shooting or, or, or still life do be aware that they can give off quite a bit of heat so make sure the rooms are ventilated have the fan running um, the more expensive lights um, come with some kind of fan within them uh, and they'll produce a little bit of noise but it, it won't be too much to disturb in, in terms of, of the work you're trying to achieve um, and it keeps them cooler as well obviously the cooler the lights the more comfortable everybody is uh, now there's also strobe lighting uh, and if you've ever been in any kind of studio um, you've probably seen strobes. These are things that are mounted up on the ceiling or mounted up on the wall, angled down, um, usually the soft box is attached to them um, or some other kind of, of you know, maybe umbrella that you can shoot through. Um, and these tend to be quite popular with, with, with most studio photographers. Um, now they're good, um, I would recommend using strobes at every possible opportunity that you can. They can be heavily configured, you can attach gels to them to produce different lighting effects. Um, you can angle them up or down, you can attach as I said shoot through umbrellas, um, ring lighting and you can fire them off in a number of different ways. Um, obviously the big con for them again is that you can't use them outside without some kind of external power, be that a generator or some kind of electrical power supply to use outside um, and also with strobes as well sometimes you'll need particularly if you've got an older camera a trigger to fire them off um, there's a couple of things you can do I've got a trigger here this is a Yong Nuo trigger um, designed to work off um, Yong Nuo flashes um, and it's quite simple you'd attach your um, trigger to the strobe um, through this coaxial cable on the side here, I'm not sure if you can see that, I'll try and focus for you. Yeah, and there you go, so you plug it into there. You then turn the um, trigger on, uh, and you then set it up to fire onto your strobe using a number of different buttons. Um, now all triggers work in a completely different way, so if you've got a Canon trigger then perhaps it will work for strobes, some perhaps won't work with a set of strobes if they're older triggers as well. Um, but that's where these come in, trusty speed lights. Um, again, this is a Yong Nuo, but if you shoot Canon, if you shoot Nikon, you'll be able to get a, um, a you know, manufacturer's um, fl flash gun for your, for your type of camera, and there's many, many market alternatives as well. Um, I'm not going to turn this into a product review. I do like Yong Nuo. They are cheaper than Canon. Um, they work very well. Um, they're quite robust, um, and you've seen those triggers available for them. Um, but in order to fire off a strobe using a flash gun, you'd simply mount it to the hot shoe at the top of your camera. From there you'd simply turn it on. There's a number of options on the back here when it turns on. You'd press the mode button, which is here. Set it to manual. Um, you can adjust flash powers. The amount of zoom you can have, for example. Um, you can adjust the power of the actual flash, so it's going to fire for 1 1, which is really, really bright, or perhaps 1 125th of power, which is not so much of a brighter flash. Um, and there's a number of different options you can use. But once you fire it off, this will then fire off the strobes across the studio. It works for an infrared light, which you'll see at the front, uh, and it will fire off any strobes, which also have an infrared sensor to, um, to work across the studio. Uh, there's also a pilot button which if you press should fire off a flash and the battery is quite low in this one so it may not work there you go now the good thing about these as well is that they're portable so you can take them absolutely anywhere they do run off batteries um young newos are quite good with batteries um but they can flash guns can be quite battery intensive um, and going back to the trigger that i talked about as well if you set up a load of triggers across 
a room or on some tripods or on some lighting stands you can fire those off um, either using a trigger on top of the camera which will fire off all of your flash guns uh, or alternatively you can use this one now I will do a video on lighting and lighting techniques and perhaps how to use them on location uh, at some point in the future but I thought I'd just briefly talk about the different types of lights that you have so with strobes um, as I say studio standard uh, if ever you've worked in a studio, if ever you've been into a photo studio, or perhaps you have them at home, if you've got a home studio set up in, in your garage or your dining room or wherever, you may well have a strobe light set up. Uh, and as I said earlier in the video, these would always be the things I'd use 100% of the time if I could. Um, they aren't cheap, let's be honest with you. Strobes are expensive. Um, you can get um, second hand ones online, uh, and that's always worth looking into and investing in. Um, continuous lighting setups, they are cheap. Um, you can buy a home studio kit online for between 80 and 100 pounds uh, and that gives you um, the setup to run um, two continuous lights um, as well as a couple of backgrounds um, and allows you to experiment. Um, if I was to turn this light off now you'd notice a difference in terms of, of, of how I appear. So yeah, pitch black. You know it's, it's daylight, it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon um, and there's no light source coming in at all. So if I turn the light back on, there you go. So there's a continuous lighting source. Now, as I said earlier, they do run a little bit hot. When you turn them off, of course, you need to allow time for the bulb to cool before you touch it. There are horror stories of people who haven't done that and they have suffered a burn. Um, and again, the, the cables will trail out across the floor. So if you're working with children, if you're working with animals, perhaps in some kind of environment, um, you need to be aware of the health and safety aspect of working with those cables. Continuous light is good for movement um, and it will also always show you the effects you'll get on the back of your camera screen whereas if you're working with a flash and you're looking through the viewfinder the back of your uh, of your camera screen won't necessarily show you the, the finished output of the photo but with a continuous light you'll always see that okay and we've talked about flash guns um, hard and fast, photographers have been using them for years. You can put them on top of your camera, you can bounce light off ceilings, bounce lighting off walls. Very rarely should you aim the flash at somebody and fire it like you see in the movies because all that does is produce a washed out effect. Um, and with flash guns, as I've already said, set up some triggers just to summarise and experiment. So that's this lighting in a nutshell. I will do a video on different types of light source, how you can manipulate light, things like light painting, what to do if you shoot in the dark. Perhaps we'll go out and do some light portrait work using um, maybe an LED um, or a single flash um, to produce interesting results in shadow. Um, but thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please do subscribe. This channel will grow, the videos will get better. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.